Randy Robinson at Life Today TV. Heaven is for real. If you haven't read the book or seen the movie by now, you're in the minority, uh, and you should definitely see it, read it both. Um, you know Colton, uh, and you know the name Todd Burpo because uh, those are the central figures in the story. I've got Todd here. We're going to talk to the guy right here. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, that's the movie cover on the new rewrap book cover. Todd, it's a pleasure having you here. It's good to be here. I got so many questions for you. I don't know anybody that sees the movie or has read the book. It's going to have tons of questions they would like to ask you. So on behalf of all of them, thank you, and I'll try to get them all right and packed into this one short interview. Okay. Um, my first question would be, how accurate is the movie? You know, my family and I, the first time the kids saw it, that was, that was the biggest thing as a dad. Okay, are my kids going to approve? You know, it's really hard to watch the first time for mom, dad, and my children because it's about us. It's yeah. about our life. And, and they had some real issues to deal with in making of the movie. They had to compress time. Right. And then they can't show pictures of actual buildings and places in Imperial because they could get sued because of our messed up legal system. And I was like, how can they tell the same story and deal with those obstacles? And they did. Hmm. Matter of fact, I, I looked at all my kids and I said, well, can you support this movie? And they all... Yes, we can. This is with, with, with creating characters and places and still telling the same story. I, at the beginning of this project, I didn't know how that was going to, how they were going to pull that off, yeah. but they did. I think one of the best things that, that I hear from other people that have read the book and seen the movie, they love it. But the one most important to me is what are my kids going to think? Because they're going to hold me accountable yeah. for what, what Hollywood did. And I know you already spoke to Randall Wallace. I'm so grateful for that guy because he made it work yeah. and, it, and it worked good. Well, and he did it. He made it. He made it work from a movie standpoint. He because did. The guy knows how to craft a film, like and tell a story, like like very few people can do. So, um, on the on the kind of the reality sticking to the facts side, what would be the biggest difference in reality and the movie, other than the physical objects of buildings and things like that? Well, the biggest difference, probably, to my family is since they they live in Imperial all the time. You know, we don't have a bridge going into town. Just those nuances that yeah. no one else would care about. Right. Um, what about the characters? I mean, the characters, all the characters that were created for this film are so believable, and uh, some of them are a compilation of a couple people. That's what I thought. And but at the same time, every one of them are people that we've dealt with, lived with. Probably the most creative scene that Randall made was the one with the psychiatrist. I, I think okay. one of the things that, you know, that did not happen in real life, but it was it was beautiful because. Randall allows those people to voice their opinion that share her concerns. Well, I don't know if I believe in spiritual, and I, I believe in an explanation that maybe drugs and chemicals, and I think sometimes we don't let those people voice their opinion and then listen, and I think that was a wonderful scene that he created. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll address those issues. We'll mm -hmm. let you talk about what you think, but stick around for the story to see how this unfolds. So and and that, was, that was a wonderful, brilliant thing. It was a great scene. And that, in fact, that was one of the things I was going to ask you about. But you're saying you didn't actually go see a... She wasn't your psychiatrist. She was no. a professor of psychiatry. Yeah, a professor of psychiatry. Yeah. So you didn't actually go. Well, you know, where I come from, you know, that viewpoint's in the minority. Because in a small town yeah. where I live in the Bible yeah. Belt, you know, uh, it, it, I think there's a lot of people in our country that have that viewpoint. Sure. But how do you introduce that character and not offend someone from a small town? Yeah. And he had an, an incredible way to do it. Yeah, and it was a good scene, and I like the way you ended it, and I won't spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen yeah. it. Yeah. Very good. Um, the woman the woman in the church that had lost a son yeah. in the war, factual all the way through, compilation of... Compilation? Yeah. You know, I, um, I, I think when you're, when you're short on time and so forth, you know, some of the issues, I think what makes a movie great is character development. Right. And if you introduce all the different characters, then yeah, you have no time scattered. to tell the story. Right. And so she's a compilation of people, uh, not only people in the church, some of her concerns that she expressed very much in the movie, I had those to deal with. Yeah. Uh, but then I've had people very offended and hurt that have written me very uh, pointed letters, I mean, upset. How dare I? I mean, curse God and curse me to my face because my, my, my child lived and theirs didn't. Mm. And I've had other people really struggle with that. And, it, and it's an issue. And I love the way how Randall didn't avoid that tough issue. Mm. He dealt with it because yeah, we have to deal with it all the time. Yeah. Did you have anybody leave your church over this whole thing? Well, you know, I haven't had anyone leave the church because of the movie. I mean, the story itself. Right. 
But a lot of people have been uncomfortable with the success. I think in the church, one of the things that's very um, hard for people to deal with is to celebrate for other people when God does do some big things. Yeah. But I think the other thing too, when, when the book found such a large audience and now the movie, all of a sudden that meant my church had to deal with sharing me. In a small town, pastors are supposed to be there for them and they're not sure. supposed to have to share their pastor with anybody else. And, and I'd be lying to you if I haven't had some people not like that and decide, you know, we, we're going to go somewhere else because of that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. One th okay. The timeline, what year did this actually happen? Okay, Colton's uh, near surgery that he made his trip to he heaven happened in 2003. And the book came out? 2010, November. So seven year gap. Because, and, and if you haven't heard this already, <clears throat> I'll just forewarn you, you're going to get this. Because in the, in the movie, and I'll just ask you how accurate this is, I would assume it's accurate, you're portrayed as bills piling up. And then yeah. when your son goes in the hospital now, everybody knows how expensive that is. Yeah. Um, my thought while I'm watching the film was, uh, people are going to say he wrote the book just for the money. Well, the timeline will but it was seven pretty years. much debunk that, yeah. yeah. Well, and you the know, other part of it is that people may or may not know is that writing a book does not guarantee any success <laughs> at all, especially these days. And exactly. I actually talked to someone from the publisher who has worked on the project, and he said we had no idea when no. this book was published. If, if there was well. a formula for making a book successful, believe me, they'd be following that formula all yeah. the time. Yeah. But when... When I was uh, paying those medical bills and we had all those financial problems, those were very real. And in the book, we talk about how God answered those. But, you know, all my bills had to be paid off well before seven years. <laughs> right, you know, I right. mean, that was not an issue when we finally agreed to write um, the book. I mean, that was long gone and that was in our past huh. by then. Huh. Last question, and, and this is one I know people are going to want to know the answer to. Colton all these years later. Mm -hmm. I don't remember hardly anything from when I was five years old. Yeah. Right. Is it just as real to him today as it was then? And, and how has this whole thing kind of affected him? I think um, probably the things for Colton that has helped him, I think when I'm little, the things that I remember are the things I really enjoyed or scared me. Yeah. You have to understand, almost dying is incredibly traumatic and going from almost dying to heaven that's the type of stuff you remember as a little child. Mm -hmm. But when he started sharing these incredible experiences about heaven, another thing that I personally believe is God answers prayer. Mom and I can constantly pray, God, don't let him forget. This is, this is too important. Please don't let him forget. And, and we talked about it a lot too. Mm -hmm. I think things that you talk about and it's okay to talk about, you remember those things? Yeah. Now he has some, some memories of faded, but most of them are very clear. But I think God answering those prayers is a big part of why most of his memories are still very vivid to him. Hmm. And what is he doing these days? Well, he's a he's freshman singing. in high school. Uh, he still sings. We travel, and uh, he's starting to share more and talk. But one of the things that God has blessed him with is um, just an incredible gift with music. He loves music. Uh, he loves to play. He loves to sing. And I've seen him as, as a kid get up in front of huge audiences and not even blink, you know, and I, I could never do that. You know, people go, well, you talk. Well, I can talk, but he can sing. I mean, I would never do that. And I really think that music's going to be a big part of his future. Mm, I've heard of him. He's got a nice voice. He, he really does. And I think it's not just a nice voice, but I think, you know, spiritual people will understand what an anointing is. Yeah. And I've never seen an anointing on a person that sings like he has when he sings. You must be a proud dad. Well, it's one of those things where it's all God. Yeah. You know, I sit back and I go, God, how am I going to raise this kid? You know, I think uh, my, my, my wife and I, you know, our biggest uh, prayer for Colton is, you know, we want him to, to get through his teenage years and develop and be a, uh, you know, a, a great Christ follower like he is, but continue to be that. And how many teenagers have all these issues? And now he's got a book. Now he's got a movie to deal with. Mm -hmm. And so we are very concerned about that. And one of our prayers is, and, and one of our greatest efforts is to keep his life as normal as possible. He still does school events. Uh, he doesn't travel that much. People always want him to travel more than he does. But that's the reason why. We want to see him mature and develop healthy and whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll pray for your whole family Thank in that you. way. And and. Just so you know, um, putting that out there, putting a story out there, 
has already blessed a lot of people and will continue to bless a lot of people and shake some skeptics. One of the greatest mm -hmm. things about the film, in my opinion, was that it doesn't attempt to answer every question. No. But it opens a lot of questions and forces you to think. Yeah, I think everyone who watches the film is going to have to ask themselves, do I believe what I say I do? And should I? Yeah. I think that's a healthy conversation to have. Sure. And, and I think, too, the place we're having it in is where God wants it. I think sometimes when we just talk about faith in church and just in the, in the four walls of a church on Sunday morning, are we changing the world? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But when we can take that conversation and we can put it out in movie theaters everywhere where people walk, where they travel, and where we can sit there as a church and show up and say, you know, you need to think about that. There is life after death. And here's this kid. He went to heaven. Oh, do you know which God is the God of heaven? Mm -hmm. What a wonderful conversation starter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great and a great movie. So congratulations on, uh, thank you very on much. the book and the film. And thank you for being here with us. Um, Todd's also on Life Today with director Randa Wallace. You can see that at lifetoday.org. And man, if you haven't seen Heaven is For Real by now, come on, get out and see it. Thanks again for sitting down with us. Appreciate it.